being creative with purpose. Now, Craig, just come out here for a minute. Do you remember when you first became an Adobe Creative Educator or an AEL as it was back then? Oh, yeah, it was at least about six, probably seven years now. And in that time, you've had an amazing impact. You've done so many workshops and presentations. You've been involved in this event or variations of this event over the years. And this year you've flown in from Sydney to be here in Melbourne, yep. which is wonderful. You're also gonna be in the Sydney event too. I think you're one of the only ones that are coming to all four days, but thank you so much for being involved in it. Let's give Craig a round of applause as he enjoy this fair yeah. yeah. talk. So let's have a look at what is purpose? Well, I looked up you know, the Oxford language and it said purpose is a noun. It's um, reason for which something is done or created or for which something exists. It's a, pen, a person's sense of resolve or t determination. So to put it in a more simpler term, I am what I do to make who I am. Right? So that aspect. You can have two areas though, of values and also goals. The values is our direction in which we move and the goals are actually able to be crossed off um, and being achieved. The purpose can actually be those three different main areas, personal, business or study, or is what I like to call them, yearning, earning and learning. Right, a lot of the time we look at earning as the main one there, but I believe we've got to yearn and learn to earn. So with values, yeah, what do we value about learning, right? Is it personal growth? Is it new skills? Is it knowledge gained or applied? Is it the style, what style of education appeals to you? What sort of student are you? I know you're all educators, but what sort of student are you? We've got to think that aspect of who's actually there in front of us. And then what personal qualities do you actually bring to the classroom as an educator? These all go towards your values. And then when we're completing our goals, we, do we look at success of gaining achievements, status, wealth or power? Or do we actually waste a lot of time on the goals that are not meaningful to us without the creativity linking our values and our purpose? So what is creativity? Right? It's something, again, if I go back to the you know, Oxford language, it defines creativity as the use of imagination or original ideas to create something inventness or imaginative. So what's your creative mode? Is it exploratory, transformational or combinational? And with those ones there, exploratory is actually new ideas from exploration of setting their goals to problem solve. Transformational, you're going to ignore all those fundamental rules, you know, make the impossible possible or is it combinational, you know, a mixture of both those modes that where most of new ideas are actually combining old ideas and coming up with something unique and new. So what we could look at is it could be similarity driven. We've got a spoon, a fork, a knife. That became a splayed, right? So that's that sort of one when there's similarities there. Or is it inspirational driven? You know, does anyone here know what two combination things are here in front of us. Okay, if your name was Philip Stark, who actually saw the juicer and an octopus, smash them together and got a much better juicer that actually can just put a glass underneath and work too. I thought head scratcher. <laughs> <laughs> but that's that aspect of being able to see, you know, in a transformational or inspirational driven aspect there. Um, that you are able to generate new ideas. And if we can generate new ideas <coughs> as a routine, then we'll find that the apparent disruptors that we see out there are actually drawing inspiration from others and other ideas that they've come up with. So the idea of the level of creativity goes up with your quantity of ideas. If we look at Agatha Christie, she had 91 books she gave us Hercule Poirot and also only published about two thirds of those 91 books, but sold over 2 billion copies that only been surpassed by the Bible and also William Shakespeare's works. Picasso in his lifetime, 20,000 artworks. 
how many of those artworks can you name of the 20,000? <laughs> <laughs> and then we've got Sir James Dyson. 5,127 prototypes to actually produce one effective vacuum cleaner. Sir James um, Dyson actually said that he actually had 5,126 failures, but he learnt something from each one of those failures. And always there's got to be, you know, the kid in the room that's actually going to be the overachiever. We've got Thomas Edison, you know. Um, 1,093 patents to his name in the States, 2,332 worldwide, with over 4,000 notebooks with ideas that never even made it to patents. And here, you know, came in with a lot of ideas that, well, this has only been surpassed recently uh, in the last few years um, by a Japanese inventor who's just gone to 2,333. <laughs> So it's about being purposely creative along the way there. Because what happens is most people believe that creativity is actually a natural gift that only a few select of us actually are born with. And of these creatives, we're in those cool jobs that, you know, we play all day sort of aspect that it's always that sort of one there. But that's really far from the truth, right? Let's reset that truth. Creativity is actually innate in the sense that we're all born with it. But as we grow up, most of us, some more slower than others, unlearn it. So what can, or what is unlearned can be learned again. But how do we actually get that back? Again, it's by looking at the purpose. If we're purposely looking at being creative each day, we can actually strengthen that creativity by actually flexing our muscle, our creative muscle. Planning out when we're going to be creative. Instead of having that one time that we go, oh, I've got some inspiration. I'm there. Instead, daily, weekly, or monthly, we actually plan to be creative. Then we're becoming more purposeless in our approach to creativity. So with that purpose, as I said, it will allow us to actually be able to ask ourselves if what we're doing today is actually going to getting us closer to where we want to be tomorrow. Otherwise, we blindly go along and we just go creativity here, creativity there. We may not achieve what we want to achieve at the end of the day or our students as well. A little bit like what um, Brian had said when you know, as teachers, we've also got to engage with a purpose. Why, do, why are we actually teachers? Why are we, you know, being out there, being able to be creative? So creativity, it's actually the ideal discovery of purpose zone, right? We've got the fifth industrial revolution on our doorstep, right? Human, machine, augmentation and interaction. Yeah, we now need to be more purposely creative going there. So as Dr. Brian um, mentioned, creative exploration augmented by AI is actually an opportunity for us to discover that sense of purpose for our students. So the big question, reworded slightly from what yeah, Dr. Uh, Brian said there was, how can AI help your students practice creativity more to set them up for the earning, learning, and yearning success with a greater sense of purpose. Remember to stay creative when you're using Adobe Express. <laughs> <laughs>